all the time Put a song of praise in this heart of mine Good morning church and all our viewers Once again, I hope that you are all doing fine I am Sister Marisol, your presider for today we want to thank God for an awesome and touching Sunday service last week, especially our Mother's Day celebration online. Remember to be awakened and to arise and shine for God to empower us with a greater anointing to reach the lost during end time, which is last week's message. We are in a time of transition under the conditional movement control order. Let us continue to pray that we can worship and fellowship together again in person soon with some standard operating procedures given by the government. Let's continue to be patient and exercise social distancing and good hygiene when we go out for our work activities during the conditional movement control order. Meanwhile, remember to take this time to draw closer to God through personal worship and prayer and Bible study. By the way, our presenters for today are the following. Scripture reading is to be given by Brother Noel Edwin. Worship reading is to be led by Brother Joshua Hamandron. Exhortation is to be given by Sister Dana Krishnan. There will be a special prayer for the nation of Malaysia to be led by Pastor Philip Daniels. And finally, the Word of God will be shared to us by our dear brother, Brother Daniel Quay. I hope that you will all be richly ministered today. Remember to stay tuned, church, and God bless. Through the darkest night. Good morning, church, and all of you. Today's scripture reading is taken from Psalm 47, verse 1 to 9. To the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah. O oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the tri voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the people under us and the nation under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reign over the nation. God sit on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham, for the shield of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. God is good. God is good. Oh. good morning, church, and to all the viewers. Here's a song, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Please sing along with me and be blessed. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The city of our God, the Holy The joy of the whole earth. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on
And Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal, throughout earth and heaven above. Great is the Lord. the Lord and most worthy of praise, the city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole earth. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. us against the enemy. We bow down on our knees, oh Lord. And Lord, we want to lift your name on high. And Lord, we want to thank you for the words you've done. The title of my exaltation is Hope in God. What is hope? Hope is commonly used to mean wish. But in the Bible, hope is a confident expectation of what God has promised and in his faithfulness. Faith is substance of our hope. Hebrew 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is confident in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith in God's love, His word and power give us hope for every day. I want to share three points about hope in God. Number one, God is God of hope. Romans 15 verse 13 says, 
God is God of hope. This means He is the source of all hope. If we are going to have hope, it must come from God, for He alone has the power to give us. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Nothing in this world can compare with God's love for us and His power in our lives. God is love and He loves us unconditionally. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. As we meditate in the incredible attributes of God in the scripture, it gives us great hope and confidence for our life. Example of God attributes. God is faithful, immutable, almighty, trustworthy, loving, all-powerful, all-knowing, holy, compassionate, righteous, and more. Hope depends on knowing God and resting in His grace. Let's look at few scriptures in Bible about hope. Psalm 71 verse 5 says, For you are my hope, O Lord. You are my trust from my youth. Psalm 146 verse 5 says, Happy is he who has a God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Point number two, hope in God's promises. Hebrew 4 verse 12 says, the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. God's word have the ability to change the way we see ourselves and even our future. Hope comes from believing the truth and the promise of God in his word. Hope strengthens our heart and holds us to our faith in God's promises. Hebrews 6 verse 19 says, Hope is the anchor of the soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. As we fill our mind with what God says about us and claim his promises as our own, it will bring hope and build our faith. We can't always change everything that is happening around us, but God's words will change us. How we think, how we feel, and how we view our circumstances. God's promises in His Word gives hope for many things. Examples, Psalm 42 verse 11 says, Hope in the Lord's unfailing love gives peace, security, and rest to the soul. God gives us peace, joy, and rest as He hopes in his unfailing love. Psalm 42 verse 5 to 7 says, Patiently wait for God alone my soul, for he is the one who gives me hope. He alone is my protector and deliverer. He is my refuge. I will not be shaken. God delivers me and exalts me. God is my strong protector and my shelter. Psalm 31 verse 24 says, be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. Hope gives strength, courage and boldness. Hebrew 10 verse 23 says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wearing, for he who promised is faithful. God is faithful to keep his promises. Point number three, abounding hope by Holy Spirit. Hope releases the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Romans 15 verse 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God of hope will flood our soul with exceedingly overflowing joy and peace by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Holy Spirit is the power of God who produces in us His fruit of joy and peace as we trust in Him so that we abound in hope 
every day. Hope also enables us to endure hardship and long waiting periods. And God uses this time to develop character and endurance in us through His Holy Spirit. Hope builds us up as we wait on God. Holy Spirit is our comforter and helper. He will guide us, give us grace and strength to get up and move forward. He will lead you one step at a time into the fruitful life God has planned for us. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future. God promises to prosper us and give hope and bright future. Romans 12 verse 12 to 30 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. In conclusion, whatever we may be facing or experiencing in our life right now, we can stay hopeful because God of hope is with us. Seek God who is the source of all hope and let us put hope in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hope you are encouraged with my exhortation today. Take care and God bless you. In that day, the Lord will be the only one and His name the only one. Let us meditate the meanings of the lyrics. Let's welcome FGTC Main Child Sister. Church. Shalom to all of you. What a beautiful Sunday morning. 17th of May. Today, 
we want to live the two nations that is Malaysia and the Philippines this morning to the Lord our God to the throne of grace for oh, father we just come to you oh, Lord lifting these two nations Malaysia and the Philippines oh, father we thank you Lord for your love your mercy and we pray right now that the nation of Malaysia and Philippines will receive your peace that passes all understanding at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lord. We pray, Father, for your love, and we know your love endures forever. Lord, we pray and bring our inspiration and aspirations to you, Almighty God, during this time. Lord, we pray that all fear and inconstancy be taken away, Lord. Instead, we receive your love, your mercy, and your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, it is time. We just want to lift up all the frontliners, Lord. Doctors, nurses, paramedics, police, and even the army, Lord was giving all their time and all their efforts, O Lord, even working long hours, O Lord, to make sure that things move in accordance, O Lord. And also, Lord, that many, many will receive the medications that they need, O Lord, and the treatments that they need, O Lord, at this time. And also the crowd control and all that is taking place, O Lord, is just to help us and to help one another at this time, O Lord. And we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are a great God and you are with us and you are with them. We just pray that you give them the peace that they need at this time, O Lord, and that they may know your love and that you are standing in their midst. Hallelujah. We praise you, Almighty God. Lord, we also want to lift our Prime Minister, Tan Sri, Modi Nyasin and his cabinet, O Lord, and all the decision makers at this time, O Lord, who governs this country, Malaysia. I pray, Father, that they receive the right wisdom and they move in accordance of righteousness, O Lord. We pray, Father, right now, right now. The Lord, we also want to lift up the President of Philippines, Rodrigo Dudante, O Lord. And also his cabinet members. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you protect the governance of Philippines as well. Oh, Father, we also pray, Lord, at this moment for peace and restoration in both nations, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we all move with a humble and contrite heart, seeking your love and mercy. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We also pray, Father, for your protection upon Malaysia. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus. Covering this land with your blood, oh Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ. And also the nation of Philippines, covered by your blood as well. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes. We also pray for the Philippines against natural disasters like cyclones and typhoons, oh, Lord. Lord, we pray for Psalm 91 to protect this nation of Philippines and also protecting our nation, Malaysia, as well. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for you are such a great God, which is full of love and mercy for both these nations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name, and we say, Amen. A very good morning, Church, and to all of our viewers. Uh, I hope you are staying safe and staying well at home, being healthy and all. So the title of my message today is called The Decisions That You Make Today Will Impact Your Tomorrow. Now, what I'll do is I'll take a few examples from the Bible 
of uh, important figures and the consequences of their actions and what their actions did. So the first example was Abraham. Now, Abraham had heard the call of God and he chose to obey that call of God. Now, it was not only the call to obey, but his act in obedience, which enabled him to be prospered greatly by God and allowed God's promises to be fulfilled in his life. Now, all this is found in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4, and I will read it now. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. I will bless you, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all you, and in you all, the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Now, because Abraham had decided to obey this call, not only was his wealth greatly multiplied, but the promises of God were also fulfilled in him, which were that God would bless those that bless him, and God would curse those that curse him. Now the second example is Moses at the burning bush and the whole story can be found in Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 22 but I'll just summarize it really quick. So God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and he introduced himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and he told Moses that he had seen the oppression of his people who are in Egypt and had heard their cry because of, for, of their taskmaster, and he knew their sorrow in Egypt, just as God knows our sorrows. And God called Moses to deliver his people from the oppression of the Pharaoh. However, in between the passages, you can see that some doubts arise from Moses on his capabilities for such a big task. And most of the questions are, of the what ifs. Moses would doubt and ask about what if I am not good at speaking? What if I cannot persuade the Pharaoh? What if I'm not convincing enough? Anyways, in Exodus chapter 4 verse 1, Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. In verse 2, the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? He said, A rod. Verse 3 states, And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Verse 4, Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand, and take it by me, and take it by the tail. And he reached out and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. And finally, after all the assurance, Moses finally took a step of faith to obey the call of God. And God did great exploits through him. And he even parted the Red Sea, of course, and delivered the children from the Pharaoh. Of course, this was possible, first of all, because God had called him to this purpose. And because Moses had answered the call with obedience, he had made the decision to, to obey that call. And the third example is found in Joshua chapter 2. So this chapter tells us about two men from Acacia Grove that were sent out to spy secretly the land, and the Bible says especially Jericho. Now they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab, and they lodged there. But soon after, the king of Jericho himself heard about the two men and he had sent a message to Rahab to bring out the two men. If you were put in her, pos in her position, obviously it would be a very hard decision to make since the king himself had ordered Rahab to bring out these two men. And it was in this brink of decision that Rahab made her choice. 
Instead of exposing the men, she made the decision to hide them. Her belief, her faith in God and the witness of God's signs and miracles that God did to the children of Israel made her take that made her make that decision, which of course is a very hard decision. It is very bold and it is seemingly very dangerous, but it was the right decision. And because of that, her whole household was saved from destruction. And she herself became a part of the lineage of Jesus. Now, in the fourth example, we look into the book of Genesis again. This time, instead of looking at Abraham, we look at Lot. Now, Lot is introduced to us as the nephew of Abraham, who is sojourned with Abraham. And in Genesis chapter 13, verse 5, it tells us that Lot, who, like his uncle, had become very wealthy. However, because of the combined wealth of Abraham and Lot, they were forced to separate. To separate. And Lot was given the first opportunity by Abraham to choose where to go. And Lot made that choice which on the surface seemed like a good one. However, let us now read Genesis chapter 13, verse 10 to 12 to get the whole picture. It says, And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zoar, then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham after Lot separated from him, Lift your eyes now, and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward. So, we can see here that it had seemed that Lot made the right decision choosing this plentiful land, but little did he know that the people of Sodom had inherited that land and they were exceedingly wicked and sinful towards the Lord. But, even as good as that decision had seemed on the surface, as a result, there was much sorrow and hardship for Lot. Just to list it out, he suffered many things. The first thing that he suffered was war. The second was kidnapping. The third was oppression and torment by the citizens of Sodom. The fourth was the loss of his material wealth. And the fifth was the death of his wife and others. A very tragic loss right there. So the examples of Lot and also the right decisions of the examples of Abraham, Moses, Rahab and many others in the Bible tells us of the importance of making proper choices. And all these choices we make will greatly affect our lives and our future. Therefore, that begs the question, what do we base our decision making on? Well, it's important to note first that our decisions and choices as Christians should be based on the Word of God. This is the center or the pivot point, the turning point of all of our decision making. And as Christians, our lives and all of our decisions should be based on, first of all, the Word of God. His principles and what we should do to make the right decisions should always be looked at first. So, what are the points that we need to consider when making a decision? The first point is to ask of God with faith and without doubting. As James chapter 1 verse 5 to 6 says, If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally without reproach it will be given to him. And let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea 
driven and tossed by the wind. So when we ask of God, we need to ask with faith and without doubting that he will give us the best decision. The second is to seek advice from others. As Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 says, where there is, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. The third point is to have the peace of God when you make that decision. When you make a decision, do you feel peaceful about it? More importantly, do you have the peace of God in your heart? If you do, that is a good sign as it is in line with his word. As said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So, now that we've spoken about that, it's a bit of a hard question here, but what happens if we have made the wrong decision? Obviously, none of us want to make the wrong decisions, but if it so happens, what should we do? The first thing to keep in mind is God is quick and fast to forgive. However, of course, we must repent and acknowledge and recognize our mistakes and make an effort to change but it is also and it is also important to know that once we do this God will be quick and fast to forgive Psalms chapter 86 verse 5 says for the Lord are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you the second point to note is God will restore you of anything you may have lost Joshua chap Joel chapter 2 verse 25 says, The Lord in his words promises to restore back to us the years that the swarming locust has eaten. And in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 3, it states, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name. So, in conclusion, let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29 to 31 but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and all your soul when you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days when you turn to God and obey his voice he will not forsake you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them so once again, in conclusion, to ensure that we make the right decisions and the decisions which are in line with the Word of God, first of all, we have to ask God for His help and His wisdom. As I've quoted earlier in James chapter 1, verse 5 through 6, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. And in Psalms chapter 32 verse 8, it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. So from these verses, you can see that God promises us that we can indeed come to him, that we can seek his wisdom and his leadership, and he will give us the right judgment and the right understanding for us to make the right decision when we are faced with it, as long as we ask of it from him. And the second point is to surround yourself with wise counsel. We have seen many times in the past that it is extremely important to surround yourself with wise counsel. An example is taken from 1 Kings chapter 12 to 14. To summarize, these two chapters tell us about how a man by the name of Rehoboam made the mistake of listening to his childhood friends instead of the nation's elders. And because of that, he made the wrong decision. Now given his childhood friends had given him wicked counsel and he had listened to them. 
So to give some backstory, Rehoboam was a king of Israel and he was the direct son of King Solomon. Now, before Rehoboam's rule of Israel, King Solomon had imposed heavy, a heavy tax on the people of Israel. Uh, this was to fund uh, so King Solomon's big palaces and his public displays. Now, during Rehoboam's reign, the people had requested and demanded very strongly that he reduce the taxes that were in place by King Solomon. And Rehoboam consulted first the elders of the nation, which was a wise thing to do. And the elders told him that he should lower the taxes placed on the people as they requested. But immediately after that, he went to his childhood friends that gave him wicked counsel. They told him that he should do the exact opposite and that he should raise the taxes even higher despite what the people were demanding and despite what the people were capable of. Sadly, Rehoboam made the wrong decision and he raised the taxes. And this actually caused the people to become very upset, as you would expect. And subsequently, they stoned Adoniram, who was the tax collector of Israel at the time. And because of the people's rebellion, Rehoboam was forced to flee to Jerusalem. So as you can see here, because Rehoboam made the wrong decision, disastrous consequences had resulted, which led to him being forced to flee to Jerusalem. And this could have all been avoided if he chose to listen to the wise counsel of the elders instead of the wicked counsel of his childhood friends. And lastly, in whatever decision that you make, it is important to have the peace of God with you. The principles of the Word of God and the workings of God are all in line with His Word, of course, and one of it is peace. Whenever you make a decision which is in line with what God wants you to do, there should be a very strong peace of God within you. There should be a lack of conflict and instead there should be a certainty that you are indeed following God's will and God's way. So with that, I say thank you very much, church and all viewers, and I hope you stay safe and have a wonderful week ahead. Hallelujah. Morning, church and all our viewers, and I hope you are blessed by Brother Daniel Quay Johan's message today. The decisions you make today will impact your tomorrow. And as usual, we're going to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Let's prepare our hearts to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord cheerfully and willingly and purposefully. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this tithes and offering. Lord, as we lift up, Lord, before you the tithes and offering, bless, Lord, every giver. Lord, return back, Lord, your blessings to them, hundredfold. 64 and 34 Lord in return. Lord, at this tithes and offering we use for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the glory, Lord, of your name. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the vision you have given to us to make disciples, to raise up covenant leaders, and to build churches in the nations by your grace and for your glory alone. Father, we thank you, we give back to you all the glory, honor, and praise as you want to you you alone in Jesus mighty name we pray praise the Lord just thank you for your faithfulness and thank you all for your great support and uh, let's hope to see you again uh, next week on May the 24th and before we conclude I want to give you a benediction just close your eyes uh, and happen to the benediction this morning May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. May the decisions you make today will impact your tomorrow, bring forth great blessings and bring forth great hope 
and bring forth a bright future in your life. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. In the, name of, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church, once again for tuning in. And we hope to be able to worship together in person soon. And just waiting for some instructions from the authorities of how we can gather together and see what are the standard operating procedure. And we're already looking forward to continue to stay safe and stay blessed by staying in prayer in the presence of God. The Lord bless us all.